So a nice uh, cool afternoon I'm in the 50s. Nice sunny, I believe my temperature says 64 degrees yet this afternoon. And we are kicking off now. Okay, kick is controlled by the zebras. We're headed down the field uh, off Denville Mason to inbound. So it's interesting to, when we start postseason play, everyone gets uh, is a little tight. Uh, one possession in, in this contest with soccer can can usually mean a win or a loss just because of momentum and, and uh, it being postseason play. So these two have a storied history with each other, even though soccer is not very long in the, uh, the area. These two are, are usually parental powers uh, within their area. Kasten is uh, kind of rebuilding. Rochester is loaded up with uh, many upperclassmen. And like you said, anything can happen come tournament time. A lot of emotion comes into the game. Um, records go out the window, that's for sure. And with the, you know, the senior class, you know, with Rochester, they've got uh, a lot of expectations uh, to make it back to the final. Um, to where last year, uh, they've lost twice to Peru. So um, they're striving to get back and, and hopefully have that rematch. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. That's why we play. If we worried about the paper aspect, then... Uh, we wouldn't uh, always be playing the same teams. So Copeland down the right side of the field. Well, good, good attacking advantage here. Uh, loses possession, still Rochester possession. He'll be throwing it in here. Nope, Jace Pixler. It's always interesting uh, on an inbounds throw from the sideline, there is no offside, so uh, offensive players can push up uh, into the box area along with the keeper. Uh, other than that, though, that you do have to keep on onside's position, you know, on the field. So That's good to know. I'll be asking about onsides or offsides later because I get tripped up by that sometimes and don't always see it the way other people do. It's a timing issue and spacing. Yeah, if you're not familiar with it, it's a kind of a, a challenging concept, the on and off sides and when you're on and when you're off. So um, we'll fill those in as we're going through. Zebras have controlled the uh, first uh, three and a half, two and a half minutes here of this ball game. No shots on goal yet. But, um, time of possession is, is gonna be key and spacing the field out. Kasten's really packed it in and pulled their back defenders up, uh, making Rochester control and have a lot of possession. Playing in the uh, middle 40 section of the field quite a bit here. Number one, Ryan Dunn. The substitution for Caston now plays back on. Uh, Denville Mason knocks the ball back out, heads it out, out to the uh, edge of the track. Be a throw in for Caston. Chip in, into the uh, box area. Uh, by the Comets. Zach Agnew pushes it out, sends it over to... Oh, Zach was chasing up the sideline. A little off on his timing there. So... You know, it's interesting, we were talking a little in the press box about the, the rules and things for tournament play, such as the no noisemakers. And one of the interesting rules um, was that your socks have to match. You have to have the same colored socks. Nice save. Dangerous for, ball into the box. Medina comes out and makes a save. But I do notice a player or two uh, with mismatched shoes. Yeah. So interesting that socks have to match, but not the shoes. You know, they do. And, and uh, the emphasis, you know, with, with playing, um, in my experience, uh, with soccer through the years, playing in high school and, and um, coaching um, down just down the road at Argus for uh, nine years, is um, teams uh, with white uniforms would sometimes wear, you know, black socks if the opposing team was wearing uh, that color uh, to throw off the officials on making, making calls. It was more of a deception rule than it was. Um, a safety rule with that, um, so it's that just it's it's to clarify for the officials so they can make um, the correct call as they're going through because you see a lot of action with the feet and the legs down in that area. So you like two um, uniform colors. Yeah, right? so you can see the, the discrepancy between the two, so you can make the correct call either on a, on a foul or um, you know illegal contact. 
So, so far, not a whole lot of action. A couple balls have been down into each end, but uh, we're playing here in the middle 40. Uh, substitution for seven, Noah Rochester. For Noah Robert Roberts comes in, replaces Caleb Hunter. Come on out. Uh, it's interesting that both teams will bring up um, and wear uh, a, a different colored uniform on the side, so they do know that they are substitutions over there on the sideline and not an actual player in field or in play to get confused. So. Is that a rule as well? I don't remember. We didn't used to do that, but that uh, makes sense. Yeah, um, it, it, it is. It, it didn't because they've changed that just because of uh, during the regular season, it's not, you know, as as strict. I've seen a little bit of leeway with it. Ball in the box there, booted out. Looks like it will be a goal kick for the Comets coming up. But uh, players standing at the half field sometimes were at, at, at midfield to um, be inserted. Oh, change the call. We've got a corner a kick. Corner kick. Okay. Okay. So our, our first uh, opportunity here for the Zebras to maybe get one on the board. Low dangerous ball in the box. Bounced around, kind of cleared out. Settled by Whitfield. All right. Not much there. Kind of lost an opportunity. I think what's going to be key, you know, for the Zebras is to keep the ball pressure up, keep the pressure down on the offensive end, the offensive third of the field where you're going to have to make them play. Uh, misstep by Zach DuBois there. Catch and off the pole. Off the pole. Great hustle, great shot just off the pole on the outside by Zach DuBois. Uh, great hustle play. And those are the kind of hustle plays that we're going to have to have from... Um, the zebras, you know, as they're going through, just those pressure, constant pressure on the ball, um, looking for you know that breakthrough goal to put them on top. Great hustle and great, uh, great shot, left-footed shot. But that's uh, Zach's first shot on goal uh, for the night. First official shot recorded. Ooh. Deflection. Uh, Robert took one right to the uh, right the chops. Wow! Ouch! <laughs> uh, I think he's a little stunned. Coach uh, Coach Brown want to keep an eye on him here. Right to the jaw. Seems uh, uh <laughs> He's giving the thumbs up, so <laughs> maybe, I'm good, coach. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you've knocked the wind out of him a little bit there. He's checking with him. It's a good good um, move by the official to make sure everything's, you know, on the up and up, but he's okay. I think that's there's the point of emphasis that Coach Brown's gonna have to talk about. Oh, got a trip from behind. Foul on the comets. It'll be uh, direct kick for the uh, zebra's going the other way. So we have direct kicks and indirect ki kicks. Um, why is this a direct kick as opposed to an indirect? Okay, so direct kick, you know, the difference between the two, it's a, it's a good question, um, is a hard foul, which would have impeded play through. Uh, you don't see many indirect. Oh, Chris Copeland with a nice move there, cut off short. But uh, direct kick would be, be a hard foul, uh, an unsportsmanlike foul. Uh, indirect kick, you don't find those too often, but uh, indirect would have to touch another player before going to the goal. Direct kick can be kicked from the spot into the goal without touching another player. So uh, we'll talk about those a little more as we go. So Seems like we see a lot of each of those during tournament play especially. Yeah, you do. But uh, they're going to have to keep the pressure up. The back movement uh, for the Zebras, back, our back four, um, we're running a 4-4-2 four, four, alignment tonight. Um, it's going to have to push up more. Um, be careful, they're, they're, they're sweeper and stopper in the back half. Um, Micah, uh, number 18, does a great job, has great speed to cover it. Um, Adina's coming out of the goal to save one. It's a dangerous ball, those are the 50-50 the balls. Um, so, yeah, I think Medina just sent that one over to shipping. Uh, I believe so. So, yeah, we're going to be short a ball on the one side as we go through. Um, still 10 minutes into the ball game here. Still 0-0 between Rochester and Caston the, at the Class 1A boys sectional at Peru um, with it. So, cleared out, but uh, regained possession by the Comets. Hit it back the other way. Balls in the middle of the field are so dangerous. They're going to have to uh, contain those and... Uh, a quick transition is what's going to be key here. Seems like everyone's time is just a little off, and you would yes. kind of attribute that to some uh, nerves, maybe some, some nerves. Oh yeah, because this is you know for the seniors, this is it. This is uh, this could be their last game on either side, so they'll have to be careful. You know, no one wants to make that mistake or be the the reason, but at some point, someone's going to have to take some gambles and some chances. Ooh, handball. Well, 
Nope, we from behind, had a I push believe. in the back. So, yeah. You can always tell the, the, the kick, too, if you watch the official's hand, um, which he does not have that up. He should be signaling, uh, whether it's direct or indirect. But usually midfield, they don't signal that. Um, but he pointed with the, more of a flat hand, so that should be a direct kick. Since it's a push, it's a violation. It's an aggressive move. Um, Deshaun Whitfield, nice through ball to Copeland. But cut off by the Comets defender. So it's a good ball through. It's a good control ball through the, through the space. Uh, saw the gap well. It's just timing that run. Welcome to the game number three. Got a couple Jonathan guys Baker coming in. And A.J. Five, Knotts and, and Jonathan Baker come in. And Killian Bailey and Micah Whitfield head to the sidelines. No, I'm sorry. Deshaun, Deshaun Whitfield, Whitfield heads to the sidelines for the Zebras. Ball settled by Zach Agnew. Sent upside, out of bounds. Cast Throw in, ball. we'll go to the comments. So not a lot of moving in Jocelyn. First uh, 10 minutes of this ball game. I think everybody's kind of feeling each other out. First half was 0-0 uh, zero, zero the last time these two uh, met just a few weeks ago. Uh, Rochester then in the second half picked up the pressure and, and opened up their scoring. Put uh, five goals in in the first uh, about 20 minutes of the second half, so uh, we can score in bunches as Zebras can. They've just got to get themselves kind of tuned up. Oh, good through ball, mistimed it. Keeper comes out and saves it. All right, Denville Mason with a kick back in. Good touch by the Zebras. Well, just a little off on their accuracy with it. Misplay there. Michael Whitfield runs that ball down in the corner just to contain, which is, it's, it's, he's really quick, and I enjoy watching his defense in the back because he'll, he'll contain the defender instead of committing and, and uh, missing and then leaving him shorthanded. So he does a great job of, of containing and pressuring um, the soccer ball just to keep, uh, to allow the, the other defender's time to make that transition back and get in position to defend. It's a, it's a really important element of a, of a solid defender that understands not only his own uh, movements, but his teammates' spacing. So. It's always interesting, too. I think you yeah, had this, that, you know, as the, as the guys play throughout the year, um, they play on, on a traditionally marked soccer field. And uh, this evening, they're on, on a football field, which has got to be remarked and relined. So you can see the boxes outlined in yellow uh, out there in the field. So you can see the, uh, the 18 and the 6 um, out there. But then the sidelines are white. So the kids are going to have to kind of get used to the different markings. But they've played on, on both surfaces throughout the year. So they should be used to it. Just have to get acclimated to the different markings and know what those mean. But it is a little confusing, especially during tournament play when you're you're seeing yellow. You've uh, great save by Medina there, coming out protecting it and um, you know keeping himself under control. But you get uh, the yellow markings on the field, uh, meant it sometimes can be a little confusing for the kids without knowing which one's which and which one to play and which one to not play on. So. So we're about 12 minutes in, 13 minutes in the ball game. One shot on goal for Rochester. Uh, one save, uh, not really one official save because it was off the crossbar for the Comets. Nice Noah Roberts. Drive there with Joe, Noah Roberts. Off the uh, Comet defender. That uh, will be a corner kick, the second corner kick uh, by the Zebras in this half. Number nine, Caleb Hunter back in for Gonna have to Rochester add that one Zebras. to it. We don't have corner kicks on. We have a substitution here. We've got Caleb Hunter coming back in for Noah Roberts. Wonder if he's going to check him out with the uh, the shot he took to the the jaw there Caleb just a few minutes ago. Yeah. You know, he was having trouble um, with his jaw, maybe a little bit of pain. But uh, fresh legs are always good, and that's you know something you got to manage and think about as you come through. Ball played in by by Hunter. Nothing's there. Turned and shot wide by Bixler. All right, goal kick coming up for the Comets. So it'll be interesting to see how um, Coach Brown you know, changes his uh, substitution strategies. I know sometimes as you get closer to postseason or as you get into the postseason play, sometimes those guys will shorten up their bench and not substitute as much. Uh, they should be in, in shape, should be ready to go. 
Good possession there by Zach DeBoyce. Play on there, no advantage, just incidental contact. If you uh, want to call those sometimes, then you'll lose, lose advantage for the offense. And sometimes the official will delay his call just to make sure uh, that he doesn't take away an advantage um, to the offensive players. Ball played in, but nothing there. Kicked out, cleared. Off of Agnes Agnew on the wing. Whitfield contains. Okay, casting on the attack. One on four. Good no call. We had possession. Pushed across. It's going to be key. That's it, Denville. Up the wind middle. Overlap by Zach. Caleb Hunter up the middle of the field. Cleared to Du Bois. Du Bois has a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper coming. He's going, plays it through, and goal by Zach Du Bois. Nice placement with the left foot right there. Yeah, and that all started in the midsection of the field. So uh, Zebras get on the board early. Uh, uh, with, with a goal by Zach Du Bois. Nice left-footed shot, but that came with a nice little through touch pass by uh, Caleb Hunter. I'm in there, so one nothing. A 1-0 uh, for the Zebras, 15-46 into the game. Zach's second shot, that is, um, get my stats around here, there we go. That is Zach's uh, 18th goal of the year. And I um, don't have stats on Caleb's assist, but uh, his 43rd cap of the season. So uh, Zach is that's a guy they need to rely on to create things up front, that's for sure. Okay, and I think this is going to be the key right here, uh, Allison, as we watch this, this transition after this goal, is if the, if the Zebras can continue to pressure, uh, keep the pressure up, they'll probably get another one in. Um, but if they, if they become lax and complacent, uh, this is a great time where Kasten can counter and um, get a goal to equalize this. So it's going to be important that, you know, you know on both sides, that uh, Rochester continues the pressure and Kasten uh, see if they can't find a counter quickly here in the second half. Our first half. Guys, you're, as you're watching, you know, the game and the flow of it here, you've got your, your midfielders, uh, a lot of movement, a lot of pressure, but uh, I think, you know, as, as you progress through, you know, you, you can't stand, you've got to be in transition. You've always got to be in movement. Nice little give and go combination there by the comments. Onside with it, Medina's holding his line. No call, no call, wow. Uh, Comet defender, yeah, uh, from behind. A very dangerous ball, kid goes down the box, but that's up to the official. It's his discretion on whether it was a legit foul or if there was some acting involved. And I think if you have watched the World Cup this summer, you saw that's the thing that it's- Quite a bit of acting. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta just, you know, decide if it's acting or um, if it's actually a foul. So um, if not, they probably should take uh, Miss Kelsey's drama class back in, in <laughs> high school there and uh, see if they can't get some things to uh, manufacture. But I think that's something that the official, the center official's got to, you know, that's his. It's, that's where you leave it open to discretion of, you know, is it a foul or is it, um, is it a legit um, call? Oh, Goalie misplays it, Jonathan Baker on it. Uh, good, def good job of the defender to clear it out there and give him time. Not to play it across the end and give him a corner kick, but to be a throw in. Substitutions, mass substitutions by the Zebras. We've got uh, five in and five out. We'll kind of reset these here in a second. Uh, Zach Agnew. Good on the cast and defense there to not allow the corner kick. Um, we haven't made so anything happen yet on those corners, but Rochester, it's just a matter of time gas, before it all connects, I have a feeling. Yeah, we've got uh, good pressure. Tonight. It's the second uh, opportunity. You know, we've been down in here, uh, two corner kicks, two shots on goal. Um, keep the pressure up. You've got, notice you got, you've got uh, 11, uh, 10 cast and defenders in that box on a deep throw on a corner kick and one, one uh, lone uh, striker front. And the ball's still in the air. Yep, no one will settle it. You know, a and a mark of a quality team, I think, as you watch, too, is uh, they'll settle the ball and all play will be uh, on the ground. Um, you know, even through balls, uh, very, very few chips um, straight on. It will be, everything will be controlled. It's a controlled game, and the longer you control the ball, the better chance you give yourselves to uh, score and, and control the pace and the tempo and where the ball goes, so. As 
we're midway through the first half. Uh, Coach Brown has substituted uh, quite frequently here to keep legs fresh and keep guys, you know, in and to get some guys some game experience in the postseason. That always helps to uh, to get that in, you know, and to get that uh, those nerves, those anxieties out of the system. So ball played off the uh, the comments to be a throw in here for Caleb Hunter. Now those guys on the front line and on the wings are really moving up and down the field quite a bit. So fresh legs are very important at this play, this stage of play. <laughs> so we That's see. One way to keep possession. Yeah. All right. So it will be um, be a direct kick. We should have a signal from the uh, the official. It was quick here off this. Quick play and shot by Killian Bailey. Nothing there. Again, shot on goal. Good save. Our third shot on goal for the Zebras of this half. First save. Okay, watch the shape. You want to, you know, kind of watch the shape of the defenders. These back four, you know, uh, they should be kind of pulling back. They got to be at, la at least back, even with the ball, because the ball determines on and off sides um, with that as as the ball's played in. So um, they got to keep that shape. They can't get lax. And if you watch the defenders' heads, they they need to be turning, looking over their shoulder, finding out if there's anybody running into the space. Get a handball there. Direct kick. Now, if you notice this, this official in the middle, the referee is is his direct kicks is it's more of a flat hand, almost straight out in front of him to indicate the foul and direction, but also the the uh, the kind of kick, whether it's direct or indirect. Misplayed ball. Both Whitfields are there. Tag team, Mike and Deshaun. Headed out. Me cast and throw in. Okay, so as we're making this transition, you got to watch, you know, watch Caleb Hunter, watch Denville Mason on this backside. Are they getting back? Are they marking up? Do they see? Are they keeping things in front of them in the field of play? Uh, you can't hear it from up here, but you can hear uh, uh, Medina. Well, I can hear him through the, the window that's open here, him um, calling out instructions. Some people say that he barks those out because his voice is so uh, booming. He has booming. a booming that's voice, a good, that's good call. for sure. You always know where Medina is in the, in the building. Yeah, whether on the field or on the track or uh, in the gymnasium, you know that um, Taylor Medina's around just by his his command of his voice. That's for sure. Great, great aggressive play by the Comets. Sean Brown as he slips the ball through, shot on goal. Nice job there uh, by the Comets. Kind of created that on his own, but no follow through by the rest of them. He's going to have to get some other involvement there in the front if he's going to continue that pressure and have a chance to score. Uh, misplayed ball. Caleb Hunter's going to get it. And here's the key is this right here, is if he can get it back in quick while they're trying to recover. Okay, good dangerous ball in there, giving him a chance. Jonathan Baker's in there for... Um, Zach Dubois as he gets a rest. Jonathan is actually their third leading scorer this year. So coming in and filling in for Zach Dubois, it's nice when you've got uh, you know his substitute coming in is is uh, has uh, seven goals in a year. So you know he's a threat and uh, can score. So it's good that uh, you know you've got that backup that you still have that threat on there and they have to respect you no matter who's on the field. Take a little pressure off. Here we go. The Zebras, it'd be good for them right now in this last, you know, 16 and a half minutes to you know, hopefully get themselves a goal and create a little bit of separation. 1-0 is just a little tight. You know, you get one breakaway and it's, it's equal. Uh, if you get a 2-0 goal lead, that gives you a little bit of freedom to maybe take some chances to get a third goal or some flexibility if you miss time a run or miss a mark that you, you can, you can uh, still be ahead and you've got that cushion, that buffer. Nice little combination move there. Jonathan Baker and Killian Bailey just mistimed it. Good job defensively by Deshaun. Okay. 
You know, we haven't talked about much about Taylor Medina, you know, back in the goal, but uh, his goals against average this year, he's averaging only giving up 0.4 goals uh, per game um, as it averages out per game through the year um, wow. with, with 15 contests. So, you know, a senior keeper, a uh, very vocal leader, a uh, four-year starter between, you know, between the pipes back there. So uh, just a great anchor for, you know, the Zebras as, as a captain and, and leader on the field. So um, Cameron Grass punches through the hole and goal. All right. Great shot by Kim and Gast. Just taking advantage of a gap there. You could see him. You could see the wheels turning there with that, and the keeper was coming out, and he just dinked it right in off the end of his toe, and that was a very nice shot on goal there by Cameron Gast. You know what's what's impressive about it is you know you saw him turn and um, you know take that take that shot, but he almost got excited because he realized that uh, the ball was just misplayed and it bounced to his feet. You know he was close enough that he knew he could just kind of punch that through, and. Um, you know, and get that equalizer. So it's, uh, there's there's a space that the Zebras were looking for. Two early goals here in this first half. 2-0 uh, right now, Rochester, with 15-12 remaining. No, not, si just, just brother, sister. Okay, we've got a corner kick for the Comets coming up here. This is the first time that they've had um, this penetration. I think you can always talk about you know, how, how much control and pressure that uh, one team's putting on. You can kind of judge that by how many corner kicks they, they get um, you know, in a half and how many they can create uh, on that offensive end. Goal kick coming out, played off of the Comets' uh, feet here. Uh, but it's always something that you know, when I coached at Argus that we looked at as, as a stat is you know, how many corner kicks did we have and how many shots did we have on go where did they come from. You know, Rochester's got two corner kicks um, on uh, now and they've got four shots on goal early in, the, in this well just a little over halfway through this first half so good pressure offensively by the Zebras there were a lot of people down in that box a minute ago yeah <laughs> it always makes me nervous when you have that many people down there because you just don't know what way people are going to go and where the ball is going to end up and Yeah, it is, and you always want to, you know, get as many back there as you can, you know, defensively, just to prevent something from going through. And, and you know, kind of the theory sometimes is the more is is um, going to give you a better chance well, of getting a, a foot. More, it's a little more chaotic, and it, it makes it harder for the offense to know yeah. what's going on if there's all those other bodies in there too. Yeah, no clear path or no clear run to you know to the goal, so it's going to be harder to hit those gaps and hit those seams to to create stuff. Like to see the zebras maybe do a better job of controlling the the middle third of the field, especially their their center midfielders with Copeland and uh, Killian. Um, maybe a little more pressure on it, a little more control, you know, with the with the soccer ball. But uh, they see the ball's getting pinged around there a little bit, you know, with it. All right, we've got a trip. Mm, we're inside the box. Ooh, he's gonna pull it just. Outside. Just outside. He's going to be right, okay, about three yards outside the 18. We're going to have a direct kick trip from behind. So this ball's live. This can be played right in the net without touching another another defender. So we've got a direct kick. Killian Bailey is going to line up to uh, put this one into play. Let's see if he crosses or plays it. Nice little back corner cross. Offsides flags up on the other side. Okay, the official sees it. All right, so uh, offsides, just a little clarification with offsides, and this is how it, how it reads in the rule book, and that's the interpretation. When the ball is played, you must be even or a, a half a step behind your defender um, when it's played. Not when the ball goes through the space, but when the, when the ball is played, and that's the, that's the difference. And you think it's when it comes through that space that you were at. It's not, it's when the ball is played, you have to be even with the defender um, in the back, meaning the last defender excluding the keeper uh, back there, the keeper doesn't count. So when the ball was kicked, um, either the defenders took a step up and, and pulled Caleb offsides, or he took a step behind the defenders before the ball is played. It's a timing issue when you're that tight on them. 
So. And a defensive strategy as well. Oh, oh nice shot there. Zach DeBoyce, beautiful shot. Little touch pass over with from uh, Caleb Hunter. That's the second time we've seen this combination uh, out of those two just minutes after the last goal. So that's Caleb's second assist of the night. Zach's second goal uh, on his third shot. So offensive consistency and efficiency is, is working well for Zach DeBoyce this evening. But he's had some very nicely played balls from uh, yes. Caleb Hunter. Yes. It'll be interesting to see how the cast and offense comes out after this quick uh, third goal here um, and see how they are composure-wise. See if they can hold it together and keep the Zebras at bay. Yeah, last time they played it was 0-0 in the first half, and already the Zebras have gotten on the board and scored three goals in this first half. So they're going to have to find uh, a way to get a couple quick counters uh, and maybe get on the board here before halftime. Nice possession there by the Zebras pushing across. Missed time the kick. Touch pass by the Zebras knocking it out, allowing them to regroup, but sometimes you just need those just to reset your defense and, and to regain your shape, you know, on the high school level. College guys uh, move a lot quicker, so they can regain that a lot quicker. Uh, their shape and momentum. Here's a good good possession. Let's see the transition you know, as we go through. Ball's going to be played out. Tyler Gilbert on this uh, left hind, left side, fullback position. Uh, yeah, if you watch the uh, watch the throw into the defenders, the ball's got to go center. It's supposed to be center of the head, come back and then touch the, or come clear back behind and almost touch your back as it comes in. If it comes off the side or it's kind of sidewinds off there. It's considered to be an illegal throw. You're gaining an advantage and doing something with the ball. Now, right there, Zach, the voice was offside. So if the ball's played to him or he gains it, then it's an offside call. If it's not, then you know they don't call it. That's how it's changed through the years is if a guy's offsides and the ball's not played to him, they will not flag the offsides. But if he does gain possession uh, in the offside position, then the flag will come up. So that keeps play flowing and it keeps the game um, uh, moving along instead of calling a foul. There was, there was real no violation unless the ball is played to him or played to him in that area. So that's a good call by the linesman on the other side to just let play on. It's also part of what makes soccer a little confusing to me. It can. It can. It's, it's, there's some um, openness to it. There's some discretion. Um, that the officials are Personal given. interpretation. It is. It's interpretation. You know, and that, that I'm sure that goes into play. It's not supposed to, but it goes into play with um, how you're treating your center official and, and what's going on and um, conversations being had. So, and we talk about sportsmanship being a big thing. It's been a big emphasis the last couple of years by the IHSAA um, to kind of clean that up and, and to lead by example. So I'm sure there's the human element. That's why it's there. Okay, misplay by Chris Copeland up front. Comets on the attack. Gaining, this is dangerous. They just need to bottle him up. Zebra defenders all around him. Just contain. Good job. Nice defense there by, by Deshaun. Whitfield. They're quick. And oh, that's they're what both it, out there. Okay. Yep. That's by Deshaun, 16, and Mike is 18. Yes. Got the offsides flag right up here on the bottom side. He was offsides before the ball's played to him and came back on. So, um, you know, as a defensive coach, that was kind of my assignment there as, as my time at Argus, you know, watching that alignment, watching those flags move, keeping the shape in the back. Um, on the offensive end, a ball's played. See, the ball was played before Jonathan took off, so he's on sides. Hmm. Um, it's a time. It's a timing, you know, and it takes takes – you know, a that lot of experience like it in there. It would take a lot of skill to be able to read that just right, so that you don't get called for it. It is, you know, and if you watch, you watch teams and, and good defenders and strikers, you know, working together, they'll they'll take situations and move that on there. We've got a good advancement here by the uh, Zebras. Nice play in by Zach DeBoyce. Just mistimed it with the left foot in there, cleared out by the by the Comets. There'll be a throw in for the Zebras. Substitution. Substitution. AJ Knotts on for Chris Copeland. So, giving 
Chris, a little bit of a break. Probably won't see him the rest of the first half here just because he's uh, done a lot of running. No Roberts to throw it in. Nice throw in. little slip header by A.J. Zach shot just wide of the goal. So it'll be goal kick for the Comets. So you can see the sun setting. Shadows are getting longer. Uh, beautiful weather for soccer. Nice and cool. Uh, it can run forever. Um, play. Uh, field's in great shape um, out there. Uh, I've had some rain in the last week here in the area, but uh, it's not too soft. So playing conditions are in good. You don't see the kids uh, taking up big chunks of dirt or, or turf as they're out there. So you know it's just about really about right, uh, perfect conditions to play. Misplay. Medina comes off his line to collect it. Okay, you'll see some keepers throw it out, some keepers kick it out. You know, and if you look at it, uh, you know, quality of a good team that they'll they'll catch from one side and collect and push and, and throw the ball uh, to the other, and it would be able to give them uh, better control, better possession. It's a softer throw; they can control the strength and the the direction of the pass. So. You know, Medina collects it on the left side, catches it, takes two or three steps to the right, and then throws it up the sideline. So get an advancement and make the defense shift. We're talking the other day. This is uh, the Zebras being 13 and two. It's the the uh, best record uh, in the program's history, even though it's a short history, but it's the best record that they've had um, here at Rochester. So Coach Brown's been there now several years, uh, building the program and, and working with the youth programs and, and, and helping to uh, build his feeder system. And I think yeah, this is the first year uh, they've had two full uh, a roster, a full JV and a full varsity roster this year. So it's uh, you know, a sign of, of good things to come for the Zebras. I think they've got a good feeder system going. Coach Brown, does, he's done a good job, you know, building that up. And I think he's starting to see, you know, the, the fruits of those labors. And, you know, they're seeing the depth and quality of, you know, this team. So, um, you know, I know he's uh, excited about uh, the year, but I know that they're hungry and hoping that uh, they get a nice little postseason run here. All that time we spent at Argus, it's nice to see some excitement about soccer. It, it is, you know, um, you're in a you're in a glass bubble when you're down the road because they don't have uh, football in the fall. So that's this is their only sport, and you're starting to see, you know, that uh, excitement about soccer and stuff grow through not only um, the area but you know through the community that you know we're in now at Rochester. So uh, it's it's exciting to see, and it's it's exciting to see both the soccer and the football teams, you know, thriving this year. You know, football being six and one, and uh, soccer is thirteen and two. So um, you know that uh, coexistence that every, I think everyone was concerned about the first part of the year oh. and yeah. goal by Jonathan Baker played in by Noah Roberts great little assist combination uh, it's just him and the keeper keeper misplays uh, the ball kind of goes through his hands and you know uh, credit Jonathan Baker Noah to stay with it uh, to punch that in Jonathan Baker that's Jonathan's eighth goal of the year. We just talked about Jonathan here just a little bit ago, um, you know, being that, that sc scoring threat uh, for the uh, the Zebras. And uh, lo and behold, he sneaks in and gets his uh, eighth goal of the year and 17th cap of the season. So, you know, that's a great little uh, addition to have, that guy to come in and be just aggressive. And, and you need to play him and Zach DuBois together up there. You've got your second, uh, your leading scorer and your second leading, or third leading scorer together on the front, which makes it a, a great one-two combination. It sure does. You know, as we uh, talk about the fall sports and the football team, it's just been a good fall for Rochester Athletics all the way around. The girls' volleyball team um, undefeated in conference currently, and the cross-country team headed to sectionals this weekend at Culver Academy, and the tennis team has done well this year. So it's uh, it's been a fun fall to catch the athletics around Rochester High School. That's true. Yeah, volleyball team, I think, is ranked uh, in the top 10 in the state. Uh, won the TRC just the other night, beating, beating Tippecanoe Valley uh, in straight sets um, over at Valley, finishing 7-0, uh, and which is the first time uh, they finished 7-0, and I think, in about eight or nine years uh, for the girls. I know they've maybe won a few, but to go... 11. 
Guy was saying correct 11 years, so I was in, in the ballpark. But uh, our statistician, Val's back there, he corrected me, which is great. Um, but, uh, you know, the girls, you know, doing well volleyball-wise, Coach Felke. And uh, girls' soccer is, is doing well as well. So uh, fall sports are uh, definitely uh, exciting this year at, at Rochester. <laughs> So two minutes remaining in his first half of sectional play down at Peru High School. The Rochester Zebras are leading four to nothing. Substitutions again. Number 21, Aaron Orr in. Aaron Orr in. Killian Bailey takes a seat. Won't see probably Killian the rest of the uh, the rest of the half. He's done a two great minutes, job two minutes left of in possessing the, the uh, that that uh, middle third of the field for the Zebras. Great run through by Zach Du Bois. It's him and another defender. Nice playoff to Jonathan Baker. Oh, missed times it a little bit there. He was like a streak of lightning through there. He was coming. Just mistimed his run. Ball was played maybe just a little off. Uh, but you know, good possession by the Zebras to pull it back out. Um, you know, and and make make the comets recover and, and just eat a little time, you know, off of it. You know, if you control it, it's a little bit different um, with soccer than some of the other sports with it. But if you control the ball, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot like football is in time of possession. Right. If you've got it, you're you're eating time away. You're controlling it. You're dictating pace. So uh, it was a good possession right there by the zebras just to reorganize when something didn't happen to pull back out, uh, reorganize, and, and see if they couldn't get another shot. A.J. Knotts with the possession. Nice little touch pass through there. And we talked about there that ball being played on the ground. That's something that, you know, Jonathan needs to work on. If that ball is played through to Zach in the space on the ground, they've got five goals, you know, here in this first half. So it's, it's something that, you know, that you strive on as a, as, a, as a soccer player. You know, you want to stay on your feet and you want to play, you know, through balls through on the, uh, the ground. Got a foul on Jonathan Baker here going the other direction. A little roughing the passer there. A little roughing the passer. Yeah, I guess you could say that. If we were if we were doing uh, football. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he was the passer. He was roughed up a little bit. Terminology a little different, but yeah. So we're winding down the first half of play. Missed time by the zebra or the comets. Zach the boys all alone. Misplays the kick. Oh, golden opportunity given up there by uh, Zach the boys, where he could have gotten his third third goal of the uh, of the half. Uh, for the Zebras. Nice little touch pass. Maybe one more chance. And it's Off. in with five seconds to go. Goal number two. No, no, Not no. Count. The boys. And assist Are they... Jonathan Baker. Okay, there's a little, a little uncertainty here. Center officials walking to the line judge. On the other side, the line judge had his flag in the air. But I'm wondering how it could be offsides when it was just Zach and the defender back there. It was that were going at it. So we are counting the goal with five seconds to go. Zach does get his third goal of the game. Count it down. Three, two, one. End of the first half. And that's the end of the first half. Rochester leading five to nothing uh, against the cast and comments. So seems to be, as far as the scoreboard goes, uh, well in Rochester's favor to kind of wrap this up. We'll see if Coach Brown goes back with the starters in the second half to keep the consistency going, or if he goes to maybe his JV to to rest his guys. Uh, it is a Wednesday night. Uh, they don't play until Saturday. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what um, what Coach Coach Brown does here as we're going through, but. Um, Give us a moment here, and uh, we will come back and have some stats for you over the first half and kind of do a recap of what we have. Okay, back here at uh, Bengal Memorial Stadium. We're just getting ready to start the second half of uh, soccer sectional, boys soccer sectional play here at, at Peru High School. Uh, shadows are getting a lot longer. Um, I don't know what temperature is right now. We're about minutes away from sunset, so, uh, so currently the temperature... Okay, Just a moment. Fans, welcome is hanging Back steady at a 63. So sunshine and a nice little breeze are keeping it fairly warm out there. Uh, wonderful, wonderful night for soccer tournament weather. It, it sure is. I mean, like I said, the shadows are getting long. Um, I know they talked about a little bit up here in the booth before we got going uh, to make sure that we got the lights turned on. The uh, the lights are on. Those will uh, slowly come into play as we're, we're uh, getting our half going. Uh, the sun's getting down here just to the, uh, the horizon line. Got a couple of uh, zebras out there taking a look to the west. Um, ball played from the left side of the field and into the box. 
Um, so now we're going to be going from uh, left to right, which is radio lingo. We shouldn't be uh, worried about that now. We can all see that at home. Um, <laughs> You know, as we're playing through, they're going to have to kind of keep their eyes low on the horizon. They, they put it up on the ball in the air. They're going to lose it in play. So they'll have to be uh, careful of balls played from that side. But they've been doing a good job of just playing everything down the middle. I think that's a uh, strength of Rochester's play is is on the ground, uh, up the middle, or, you know, chips from about 35, 40 yards out up into the box. So so as a player, as we see the, the shadows on the field, how does that change their perception and, and – uh you know, passing the ball and that sort of thing. Well, it's, it's yeah. Um, oh, okay. Just just timed it there. That was a close call, you know, on the offsides. You know, we kind of talked about offsides. there where they're at. When the Rochester ball's played ball into back. the box, played to the position, was he on sides? If you watch it going back through, you know, when the ball was played, Zach was a step on this side of the defender. He ran around it to the ball um, and, and mistimed it. So, but that's a that's an angle. That's where you talked about the shadows. How does that come into play? Well, the official staying on this side, the shadows are going long. He mistimes it. His depth perception isn't quite there. You know, it's, it's a dangerous time, you know, with the, the sun being at this level, uh, a ball playing across the 18 or into the box. You know, keeper looks up at that wrong angle and, and loses the ball in the sun. A defender loses the ball in the sun. Uh, it could spell, you know, havoc for him. It, it just you know changes your depth perception the shadows um, the dark and light you know coming from one angle to the other um, makes well, it a our, challenge our guys on the benches over there we can see them with their hands up and the coaches their hands up blocking the sun and shielding the sun and that line judge over there also is going to have to deal with that as he's looking west as well got a trip there on the comments, it would be a direct kick for the uh, the Zebras. Killian Bailey tripped up there as he's advancing through. You know, you saw him, he get he got tripped, and the official waited, you know, a second or two after the play to see if Killian would regain his composure, stay on his feet where he wouldn't lose advantage, you know. Uh, they always give the advantage to the offensive player. If he loses advantage on the play of the ball, then they will usually call it and bring it back. Um, to the spot of the foul. So it may go two, three uh, seconds, sometimes even five seconds after the play, depending on how the foul was committed, whether he gains composure and, and keeps that through. If he loses it, then it goes back to uh, the offense at that spot of the foul. So I think it's important, you know, that, um, you know, as soccer fans, you understand, you know, playing or what the advantage is. Uh, you see the official point both hands to the ground uh, and will say advantage play on um, with that. And that's what they're meaning by that, that, uh, that call. So... Throw in by the Zebras, Ag Zach, uh, Zach Agnew uh, throwing it in backwards there with him. He's going to harass me about it, having him in class. So I think it, the, you know, the, the Zebras done a, a much better job there in the first five minutes of the second half of controlling the ball, uh, crisper passes on the ground. They've been a little bit sharper. They've been uh, pinpoint right to spots, guys running through. This seems to have their, their timing down um, and, and playing well. Glad to see that uh, Coach Brown decided to uh, keep the starters on um, and play them. We'll see how long he goes with them. Uh, but you, you like to keep uh, pace and timing, um, you know, and, and working together with the guys down um, and, and um, that, that whole momentum going. That just helps build momentum on that. So great ball by, by Caleb there. I think he misread it. He had two defenders in the middle of the field that kept him on sides instead of being off. So... Looks like a little miscommunication there. Uh, interesting call. They called offsides on this side. I don't know if you saw the last two defenders that were standing back inside the 18. If it's a late offsides, it's really retroactive to where he was played at. Uh, but the ball came through. There was actually another possession or touch before the ball was played there. So um, that's where the inconsistency with offsides and onsides is, it comes in there and in, 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 in officials knowing their rules. But usually they're evaluated, and the guys you see in postseason play were, are supposed to be evaluated to um, – you know, the highest mark and, and they you know, tend put to be in the most consistent yeah they get they get judged um, and, and rated as they go through so uh, a, a sign of a good a good linesman if you want to uh, look at it he will stay even with that last defender um, and he will move with him up and down the field so he is always in position to mark that on and off sides uh, call so um, as you're watching you know the defenders as they're going down the field does he stay with the ball or does he stay with that last defender nice shot by Zach Du Bois just wide left of the the goal there uh, for the zebras so it's uh it'd be interesting to see you know that's that's a good good mark of, of a good line lines judge is is you know him going to hat to midfield stopping at midfield because that is the last mark of on and off sides for a player uh the offense can stand and wait there on the line as long as they're behind that or even on that line before it's played into that space
Okay, a nice push, a reverse field for the Zebras. Play just a little bit in front of Caleb Hunter on that wing. Okay, as it will be a Zebra throw in. No substitutions yet in the second half. We're five minutes in. And, you know, we talked about Allison, you know, earlier on there, you know, guys playing on the on the ground, you know, mm -hmm. and staying on their feet. You know, if Cameron Gass closes down on the ground and on his defender, he's in great position to Just get a turnover, yeah. you know, and cause a turnover in the back. But when you jump and lose your feet, you lose all control and you gain, you don't gain an advantage. So, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, I, I know we stress to, you know, our players at my time at Argus. I know that Coach Brown stresses that with his guys, you know, make sure that you're playing on the ground, staying on your feet, uh, avoid the slide tackles, especially in the back third uh, around the goal. Um, and then as you're closing down, you know, and, and attacking the ball on the defensive, on the offensive, and they make sure that you're on the ground. Uh, you have control of your body and, and your movements, and um, you know, that's that's what you want. Okay, transition uh, from offense to defense is always a key. You see Zach Agnew pushing up through the space. Chase Pixler just possession a ball, uh, not pushing and forcing the issue. Is always uh, just allowing the offense and guys to react. Uh, good run through by Zach Dubois through the space. He understands the, the, the front half of the game well. Nice ball through. It's definitely been uh, a Rochester half of soccer uh, as far as controlling tempo and pace. Uh, the ball's only been down here on, on Rochester's back third, I think, one time, and it was a throw in, kind of kicked out. So uh, the Comets are going to have to pick up intensity. Here, if they're going to try and get one in and, and uh, maybe build a little momentum. They throw in by the Comets here. Okay, good change of feel. We're making the making the defense rotate over. Um, you know, as you're watching, you know, watch the back half away from the soccer ball. Are they adjusting? Are they moving to the soccer ball? Are they standing? Are they walking? That's a really a good sign, a good mark of a good team is not the, not the ball side uh, with it. It's the back side, the overlapping side, the side that everyone kind of forgets about. You know, are they moving? Are they shifting? Are they filling in the seams to where everything stays balanced and the team is holding their shape, you know, throughout the field um, on there? I think a misconception with soccer is sometimes can be that your your backfield, um, your defensive positions, those kids don't have to be as quick or um, as agile as your front line, and that's just simply not the case. And we've seen that quite a bit with our our um, backfielders here. Yeah, uh, they're quick down the field and they're quick to get back into position and really def defend the goal. You know, that is, it's, it, it, you think you want the fast guys up front so they can run the ball and make things happen. And that was, you know, the old perception of, you know, how soccer was in the United States is, you know, you put your fast guys up st up front, you put your strong, um, methodic guys in the back that could boot the ball, and it's not the case. If you look at, you know, how we've got it, you know, lined up here, um, if they line up the center um, of the field, must have... Okay, the ball was deflected back. Okay, so um, I had an injured player, that. I guess, on the field to get him back on. But um, if a ball is played back to the keeper, uh, and this, you know, this is the, a good thing too. If you play a ball back to the keeper, let's say, you know, we, we play it back to or to Taylor in the back, um, and he picks it up, he can't. Uh, he's got to play it with his feet. But if you can flick it back with your head, um, he can catch it and then control it. So anything play, played back to the keeper on the feet has to be played uh, with his feet. He can't keep, uh, pick that up um, with it. So I just was wondering if he was questioning that, but he allowed a, an injured player to kind of get off the field, and, and uh, which was a, a very classy move by the official to keep play moving, uh, allow him to get off the field here. But I mean, to go back to the, to the point that we were talking about, you know, quickness is, you know, if you look at the Rochester lineup, you know, or any kind of lineup here, uh, right up the center of the field, you know, your center mids, uh, your center defenders, and your, you know, center striker up front. You know, Zach DeBoyce is one of the fastest guys on the team. You know, you got uh, Chris Copeland and uh, Killian Bailey in the middle of the field, very quick, athletic kids. And then you go to uh, the Whitfields in the back, and they're right up the center of the field. And the two of the fastest kids on the team are actually our defenders. You know, Mike and Deshaun Whitfield uh, are our, our quickest, probably our most athletic defenders or, or athletes we have on the field. And they're in the back, you know, back third of the field. Um, and that uh, speaks volumes just to the 
the uh, respect for their athleticism, their quickness, because if you can't get around them to score, you're not going to ever lose a soccer a soccer game unless you go into PKs. Well, they into are strong young men. They're not letting anyone pass them at no. any cost. So it's not just their speed that's so impressive. Their strength is amazing. Yeah, and you know that's that's just a credit of where you want to build it. If you want to build a, a solid team, if you can fill those three spots, you know, your center mid, uh, your center back, and your 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 center striker up front, uh, and they're quick and athletic, you can fill in around them because you want to control the middle of the field because that's where the ball is going to be pushed through, you know, out there on on there. So uh, nice little flick in there, header by the Comets, just a little wide here. Uh, Medina tosses a ball down. Be a goal kick for the Comets. For Got substitutions. Jonathan Baker and AJ Knotts. Jonathan Baker and AJ Knotts are now coming back on the field. They're going off. I'm sorry. They were on. So goal kick coming up by uh, Taylor Medina. To play it out here to Zach Agnew here on this wing. Good ball. Good decision. We have control of it. Pushing out to the wing. Movement after the soccer ball. I think that's that's also another key. You know, you can watch the bas the watch the basketball. Here we go again. <laughs> watch the soccer ball. That's that's the uh, basketball coach. It's October. Coach We're getting there. I know. We're, we're, know. we're there. just days away. <laughs> uh, sorry about that, uh, soccer fans. But as, as you see them, you know, the the uh, a mark of a good team is you're going uh, moving without the out the ball. You know, and so uh, you know Agnew played the ball up there wide to uh, Jace Bixler. Bixler just possessed the ball. Uh, Zach ran through the space, but just mistimed it. You know, movement without the ball—that's uh, that's 95% that's of soccer. You're you're not going to have that many touches. It's movement without the ball. Uh, your structure, your shape. Are you filling the gaps? Are you keeping your spacing, your your balance and, and shape of the field? So, um, not bad with it. So. Okay, you saw the official raise his hands and kind of, you know, play on uh, out there in the field. Ball inadvertently came off of uh, Jonathan Baker's foot, uh, came up and hit his arm. Um, you know, handball in soccer has got to be an intentional play or an ad intentional advantage of uh, using your arms. So where it plays off of your arm uh, at some point and, and direct advantage, gaining that advantage to your feet. So it was just inadvertent. Uh, good call by the official just to keep the pace of the game moving along. Some nice touches there um, back behind the offensive line there just to get away from the defense. Yeah, now, now you know, it's, it's critical here. Watch, watch, um, watch Whitfield with the defense. Just, just slowed him down. Got a foul. Direct kick. Direct kicked on that one. Okay, you got that uh, hand straight out in front of him, pointing towards the goal. It's a direct kick, you know, uh, uh, at the goal. So it's a good call. Good. It's just an overly aggressive play. Just mistimed it. I don't think there's anything malicious there uh, with oh, that. Oh, we're stopping the clock. Okay. Got to help him off the field. Good sportsmanship okay. there. Good injury. Kasten. Okay. I'd like to see that when we help each other off the field, regardless of the team. Well, you know, let's see. You know, our sectional is. Um, you know, with the local teams that we have in it, you know, and then with the addition of uh, Peru and McConaughey to the TRC next year, um, you know, this will be an all TRC uh, sectional next year for uh, for that. You know, and our communities are, are right next door, and um, you know, we're competitors are here on the field, and everyone wants to win. But it's also no, nice to see them, you know, working together, sportsmanship yeah. to yeah. to help each other out. That's really important. You know, we stress that. Um, you know, with the, with the with the state athletic association, that we want you know to to stress sportsmanship, you know, and and that you want that you know leadership from your your coaches and your officials. And the official was a very classy job, um, you know, stopping play, stopping clock um, with that uh, to allow you know the injured zebra off the field. I think that was Zach Agnew that did go off off the field here. So got a corner kick by the Comets. See if they can get a shot, manufacture some offense here in the second half. Played off the shin, cleared out by one of the Whitfields. They were both standing there together. I don't know which one got it cleared out of there, but uh, it's all right. They'll get credit for the clear and, and great defense. I know that the defense takes great pride in their, <laughs> their um, defensive prowess and shutting teams out. So I know uh, Medina always uh, loves to have a shutout. I know he's closing in on, on the all-time school record uh, of shutouts in a, in a career, and I'm not sure about the season. Uh, ball played just wide there. Goal kick. <laughs> Noah Roberts and Wyatt Bright to the pitch for the first time today. 
So as we talk about sportsmanship here, I know the game's not over or anything by any means, but we're sitting at a Rochester score of five to nothing. I know we have to defend the goal, you know, always have to play defense, but are we looking to score anymore at this point? Well, I think you are. I, th I mean, I think you have to continue on with your your um, your game plan. You got to you know time your runs. Um, you know, get your angles. You've got to you know work on your game plan of of your movements. Um, you know, you have to continue to work to improve your game. Every time you're on the field, uh, is a chance for you to uh, improve your timing, uh, to perfect your touches. They're going to play in the. It, it appears to be right now the sectional championship um, on Saturday night. You want to get used to the field, uh, a narrower field. We're on a, on a football field. It tends to bottle things up, um, and it's not as wide. Um, it's a little bit shorter, so it, it throws your timing off. It throws your steps off. Uh, so I think it's key that they continue to work. Um, and you know, if they get another goal too, that's 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 fine. But you know, I think Coach Brown's you know stressing, you know, working on those fundamentals, your timings, your runs, um, your combinations, keeping your straight, your your shape and your structure uh, to it. So I think you know, if the opportunity presents itself, they will. But I think you know, if it gets to be uh, several more, I, I, I would would uh, be assured that uh, Coach Brown's going to probably put the clamps on it, um, just out of respect for the comments in their program. Very nice defensive presence there by the Zebras. Yeah, very, very aggressive. And this is the thing that we were lacking about the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes that we were talking about in the first half is, you know, they just weren't aggressive. They weren't, uh, you know, swarming the ball. They weren't going after. They weren't pressuring, pressuring the ball. They were giving them space to make moves. They were giving them space to turn, to evaluate, to see the field. You know, when you pressure a, 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 an offensive player with just any kind of presence, um, you know, it's going to cause them to, you know, make quick decisions and you want them. Oh. All right, little frustration there. Um. You definitely have a sense that the nerves have settled and we're here to play soccer. Yeah, it, it, you have. And you, the first couple of goals, you could see that, you know, the, the, the tempo, the, the atmosphere kind of changed on it. You could see that, you know, Rochester was kind of inflicting their, their will upon them, you know, the Comets. It just happens to be, you know, how they're playing. But, you know, Rochester is so quick to the ball and so quick to pressure it um, that it, it, it makes it hard for teams to turn and get their stuff going. It takes... Because of Rochester's quickness, it takes great ball control um, from from a team uh, to get around that quickness and athleticism that Rochester possesses. So, um, you know, they've got skill, they've got quickness. You know, um, they're they're going to it looks to, uh, like they're going to advance to the, the the tournament here to the next round, uh, but they're going to have to continue to work on it. Just the possession, see the the spacing, and see these guys switch the field. That's that's the thing that they needed to work on. You know, um, that's going to they're going to need that for the next game. Okay, they're going to play a quality opponent the next game. Ball's played through. Oh, we've, we've got, got a, a yellow card. Okay, just outside the box. So anytime a, uh, someone receives a card, that's going to be an automatic direct kick. Uh, I'm not sure who they carded. Noah Roberts coming up with the direct kick. Oh, it's not a car. It's just his hand in the sun. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, there's that. There we go. The I know. Again. And so we talk about the sun and the shadows. Or yeah, everyone's getting a good laugh. I thought he was carting. We were all confused. Yeah. So, but um, indirect kick. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there we go. He is giving the little arm motion. Like so was it was a, little... a push, just a push in the back. He called an indirect. If you saw his hand go straight up, that's where I was confused. I thought he was carting you, but he never called him over. So, It, it, it sure did. <laughs> Must have just been that reflection off his yellow jersey. Yeah, the, the shadow's coming through there, and, and that's uh, uh, my confusion with it. But you saw his hand straight up in the air. It uh, sure did look like it. it. It did, like he was carding him. And, you know, it was a push to the back. Uh, it was just kind of some in incidental contact, nothing malicious, not a hard foul. So um, so that was an indirect kick. Yep. And you saw the, the defensive players kind of line up in front of that kick, in front of the, the keeper. Um, there's a certain number of steps they have to be away 
You've got to be uh, 10 yards. You've got to be 10 yards off the ball uh, in a circle around it. So uh, as a defender, you can't stand within that 10-yard radius around the, the soccer ball uh, from a kick, whether it's direct or indirect. You can't impede it. You can't stand on it. You can't move uh, in front of it to impede the ball within that 10 yards. If not, you can be carded for unsportsmanlike play uh, with that. But he showed you know, his hand straight up in the air. So that means it's got to go off of either another defender or another um, Zebra has to touch the, the soccer ball before uh, it's played into the goal. So if he were to kick it from that spot, it goes right into the goal, it would be no goal. It would be an indirect kick the other way for Cast from the spot of the foul. Um, if uh, it, it deflects off of someone or goes off the keeper's hands and goes in, then it's played off of somebody before it goes in the goal. That would be, would be a goal. So Another ball outside the fence under the bleachers. Well, at least this one didn't go to shipping this That's time. That's true. The last one went to shipping over there. I think it might be on its way to um, Abu Dhabi or wherever Garfield used to send Otis. Nermal. Nermal. He sent you, sent him somewhere there with I believe it, so. you're right. I think it's uh, Abu Dhabi. Yeah, it was Abu Dhabi. I don't know who he's sending, but I know he was going somewhere just fun. So we're 20 minutes through the second half. Still 5 to nothing, Rochester. Uh, the Zebras have controlled the majority of the second half, as far as play goes. Um, just still doing what they do, work the offense. Kasten does have an advantage on corner kicks. It's 1 to nothing um, on those. Uh, no, no shots on goal, per se, here in the second half. Just been um, just some light volume back and forth here. Kasten's continuing to be very persistent in their presence on offense. Well, I mean, you look at the roster, too, as it comes through. They've got a lot of freshman sophomores on this roster um, with it. Uh, there, we're going to see a handball. Okay, that one. Handball on. Okay, it's going to be a penalty kick. Um, Deshaun. Yep, Deshaun was in the box. Okay, they're going to stop the clock. And uh, going to take a PK here. Number five for Kasten, uh, Braden Moss, 5'7", uh, senior uh, midfielder, is going to take the PK. Uh, that, that foul occurs. Um, Deshaun had his hand up, was raised, uh, deflects off his hand, and he gained an advantage by it dropping to his feet. He didn't intentionally do it, but it, he gained an advantage. Uh, so drops to his feet, then that's, that is a, a handball. And it's inside the box with the 18 uh, out there. Um, so he's going to have a, a PK. Let's see if Medina can stop this. The officials just given the the offensive player some instruction on what he can and can't do in this situation, and um, we're going to play. As soon as the ball's touched, anybody can touch it. After that point, the the kicker cannot touch it again until it touches someone else. So if, even if it comes off the 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 um, goal, he can't touch until another player on the either same team or other. Good save by Medina. Save by Medina there. And, and oh, deflected oh, in. Comet score. Comet score. Looks like it's a goal from number five, number five on that wing. Braden Moss. Um, Braden Moss took the took the PK, Braden gets Moss deflected, and um, uh, puts one in. That goal comes at the uh, 21. Now we're gonna add that in there. We'll, we'll get that goal here in a second. We're gonna do our math uh, with it got some kind of a discussion going out there. I'm not sure. I think they were just but making sure that there was no offsides called, but the ball goes to the inline. Um, everyone's there, so the ball's on the inline. There's no offsides per se in that time because the ball's there. Um, ball just gets bounced around, mistimed it, and... Um, Kasten has been uh, staying in the game and, and trying, so it's really great to see them uh, with the score here at this time of the game. I'd like to remind everybody that we are... Uh, cheer for both teams and encourage both teams as they continue to play. And we uh, exhibit great sportsmanship here at Bingo Memorial Stadium and with both these teams. Cheer on your team! 6101 is the uh, actual time official of the goal, time. official time of the goal, as you're going to mark it up there because you got to add 40 minutes from the, from the uh, first half on it, so as you're going to score it officially. So it's uh it's if you watch if you watch uh, FIFA over the summertime they count they count it up to the time of play and they add on stoppage time and then uh, in high school uh, they've elected to count it down 
And so you, you get confused and twisted on the time of what it is per minute there. So you'd like to see it where they'd add, add that clock. It'd be a little bit easier to understand, but you got to add that time from the first half to the second half when you're talking about goals and, and um, things with it. So you add the 40 to the second half after you do your... Looks like we must have had a little unsportsmanlike conduct there in the box. Or in the front of the box. Yep, so score reads now 5-1 to one in favor of Rochester. Um, Casting gets on the board. Um, just a little past midway through here in the second half. Uh, like I said, though, it's, it's something for Casting to build on. You know, they've got uh, lots of young players, you know, on the roster. Um, some experienced older, older players. Six, I think they lose six, you know, kids off that, but they've got a good core of young kids, you know, coming back, and uh, it's something to, you know, something to build on. Right now, you know, as the score reads, you know, Kasten has outplayed the Zebras, you know, 1-0. So. They have. More substitutions coming on. Killian Bailey hasn't played much in the second half either. There's Chris Copeland, which is the strength of their midfield. Chris Copeland in for Rochester. Um, a couple more Noah substitutions Roberts. coming on. We'll get those Zane worked out here in a second. The number, for the number 12, Zane Duff, uh, enters the, the, the game for the Zebras as a, as a striker up front. And 14, so I think you'll see Coach Brown now start to start to shift into, you know, um, preserving some of these guys. I've seen a lot of minutes. You know, it's a, it's a good workout for them. You know, they, uh, possession and you can't you know, simulate a practice like this, but, you know. Good, good, good defensive half there by the Zebras. Great footwork and speed by uh, Zebra by Santiago Henderson. You know, you can scrimmage all you want to in practice, but it doesn't match the intensity of game time. No, it, it doesn't. Or the, you know, the movements or the quickness of the steps or the timing or if you mistime something, you know, on the field and you give up a goal or you, you know, miss a pass when you had a wide open goal opportunity. You know, you can't simulate that pressure, that uh, those anxieties that go through your system, you know, in practice. You can put consequences on kids, um, you know, running or whatever, maybe push-ups, exercise. Uh, but until you put them in a game-like situation, uh, it's hard to, to simulate that, you know, and that's, you know, what these guys are getting is they're getting some game-like experience, some game action, you know, with it. And um, it, will, it will make them better players not only down the stretch of the season but also, you know, into their, into their career in high school. Good idea about pushing it through the back third. Some nice control here by the Zebras. Okay. Got a stop there by the cast and keeper. Yeah, Jace picks up, just misses it, uh, just misses the time. Timing on that, breaking through and, and getting our six goals this evening. Uh, but uh, good sportsmanship by jumping over the keeper, not going to his to his uh, to the ground, trying to pop that thing loose. Well, 15 minutes left uh, in the game. Zebras are well in control, leading five to one over the Comets. Brady Moss with another shot. And Taylor Medina for another stop. We have the field completely shadowed now. The sun's really starting to sink along the horizon. Oh, great Ooh, save. Great one-handed save. save by the keeper. Good dangerous ball up front. Um, number 12, Zane Duff, that just checked in. So great little uh, flick there with his foot. Seeing some renewed energy in the comments now since the goal was scored. Uh, it makes you, you know, makes you feel, you know, good about it. I mean, they were pressing hard. They continued to get after it. Uh, got one to slip in there. It gives them a little, little something to strive for. Oh, out of bounds. Good hustle. So. Are we switching out our keeper back here? Appears, appears to be. We've got a keeper change in the back. A rare substitution on the cast inside. Yeah, they did not sub much they here in the not. first half. Uh, we were down that way here just a week or so ago for a cross-country meet. They were playing Winnemac that yes. night, and uh, they had five or six subs there on the sideline, and uh, it appears to be they've only got three over there this evening. So uh, things are thin. Um, 
But you know they had 17 or 19 on the roster, so they must Welcome not have the, uh, brought the, uh, the, the JV kids with them this freshman. evening. Hank Brown is now protecting the goal for the Comets. So good defense, good defense by the Commas to clear that ball out. Uh, good pursuit. I think that's that's what you want to see as a coach. You want to see that pursuit going after the ball, keeping the pressure on, maybe miss time a kick. Chris that's Copeland shot, shot on goal, goal assist from Caleb Hunter from the nice. back. Nice sequence there. Chris Copeland for the goal. Another assist there for Caleb. That's three assists for this evening. Caleb. That is. <laughs> we're getting we're getting harassed by the uh, <laughs> by the staff up here. They enjoy our color commentary. So happy to help. Yeah, happy to help. Yes. We'll talk during commercial timeout. So, yeah, that's right. That's right. Timeout again. Yes, here we go. Still in the basketball analogy. So <laughs> we better get that season here quick, or I'm going to fall apart. So. Six to one now is the score in favor of the Zebras. Copeland pushing that goal through here. I'll have a time on it in just a minute. kind of like this uh, watching a game and doing stats for someone when I or for a team that I don't have anyone involved with <laughs> it's a lot less stress yeah it when is I'm not following you or one of our kids yeah it is uh, goal um, official time here as it comes through Copeland scores at the 77 41 mark uh, in the second half here uh, with that so good determination still Comets are still pursuing. I, I like that out of a team. I think that's always a mark of a good team is, you know, no matter what the score is, they're still pursuing. You know, they're still attacking the ball. They're still, um, you know, getting things they have not stopped. They haven't given up, even though this is going to be Caston's last game of the evening. Uh, right there, you see the ball come off the off the Caston's uh, the, the offensive player's hand and go to his feet. Should have been a handball, but 6-1 uh, things and calls get a little skewed just to keep the field of play moving on. Good defensive sequence there by the Zebras of poking that out. Like to see that always go to another uh, Zebra de offensive player out there to uh, gain possession. Okay, we're going to have some more substitutions for the Zebras. And for Caston, we have a substitution here, number four. Noah Roshinsky coming Knotts. in for Ryan Doan. A.G. Knotts comes on for the Zebras. Number 21, Aaron Orr comes on for the Zebras. And I think Noah Roberts checked in on the other side over there for Caleb Hunter. Caleb's on the side, Noah's back in. So probably the last time we'll see those guys. I wonder how long we'll leave. Uh, oh, he's got the rest of them out. He's got uh, Killian. And uh, Chris out, which is which is a good move. You get to this point here, you need to get a freak step or mistimes it, and you twist an ankle. Um, you get, game's well in hand with 10 minutes to go. Get those guys out, let them rest, um, prevent those energy injuries. The freak things happen, you know. And hate to see that such a great season, you know, come to an end off of a off of a freak freak injury. Uh, yeah. Nothing intentional, just We're a freak. We're in that time thing. of the evening when the dew starts to fall and things get a little slippery and ankles twist a little easier because we fall down a little more. They do. You know, get that dew on the grass. The footing's a little little off, you know, on the field. You can't quite get that. You plant and turn, and uh, you just miss time things. So, okay. I think in that last run through. I'm hoping that's the, that's the same here. We've got Trey Adley. Uh, for the zebras here on this outside, earlier, can't quite make Center, out Alex if that's it. Uh, 
um, a good overlapping run. And I think that's, you know, as you still watch, you know, and I think that's something that, you know, Coach Brown will be able to take a look on on film is, you know, you'll be able to see shape and their movement, you know, out there. Are they are they covering these back spots? You know, it's, that's the nice thing about the camera. Uh, you always love a film session with the team is you can't you can't hide when the camera's on. You can't say, well, Coach, I was there. Or I covered my spots. And, you know, I was moving. I, I was moving. And he just points to the film and say, hey, uh, yes, you're right. You were. You were covering your spots, even though that he made that run up front and didn't get it. It's just important that he create those habits you know, and keep that movement that way. When it does happen, you're there, uh, and you're that part of the part of the uh, the team and that movement. So, you know, Aaron Orr's you know run back, you know, great little sequence there for Aaron, just you know covering the space, you know. Um, Substitution for the Jonathan zebras. Baker and Wyatt Wright back in for the zebras. We've got Wyatt Bright coming in. And Jonathan Baker. Sarah Holt with the defensive turnaround for casting. Okay, and that this is this is the thing that impresses me with the Whitfields right there. Um, just great defensive pressure, um, you know, by Micah. Uh, on the ball, did not commit, did not jab that foot in there and tried to steal it or poke it loose, just waited for the offensive player to make a mistake, uh, used his quickness, his first two steps, you know, off the ball or as these defenders are so quick, allowed him to, you know, sneak in front, steal that ball and gain it and go. So I think that's what gives him advantage, you know, like we talked about in the first half. How quick is a guy, is he, you know, that quickness in the back, that's something that's really important is that first couple of steps, especially in the back third of the field as a defender, is you got to be quicker than your the offensive player. you got to match speed for speed. You know, you get fast and slow. It's it, it doesn't doesn't match up. You know, fast don't lie. <laughs> so as we go through, so winding the winding the second half down here is about seven minutes left in the uh, in the half. Um, Zebras in con in control uh, and, and with the ball on the uh, cast inside of the field. Um, just uh, working working their way through time of possession here, uh, gaining possession, working the ball, working the angle, switching fields. Uh, it's a good thing that they're continue to work on on those things. It's continue to work on skills. Uh, foul called on Jonathan Baker. A little pushing going on there. Yep. I mean, just it's a good aggressive play. It is. I mean, it's just it you know they get the legs wound up. Nothing going for the ball. Nothing malicious. So it'll be uh, interesting to see you know where they where they go back tomorrow in practice. So uh, what they uh, what they focus on. I'm sure. Uh, Coach Brown or, or somebody from his coaching staff will stay and, and watch the uh, the second game with Peru McConaughey to see who they're going to match up with uh, Saturday night in the sectional championship. Um, it'll be the second sectional finals we've had so far this year. The tennis team was uh, at the CMA tennis sectionals, uh, made it to the sectional finals, played a very good CMA team, um, played well. Just uh, quality of the opponent was was above ours that night. Um, but you know this is this is uh, a good time to be in zebra athletics in the fall. We've got uh, a couple teams, you know, advancing to sectional finals. Uh, football playoffs have not started yet. Uh, volleyball has not started yet. Girls soccer uh, is also this week. So hopefully we can uh, um, get a boys and girls uh, soccer sectional finals. The girls will be at two o'clock uh, on Saturday, and the boys will be at six uh, p.m. on uh, Saturday evening. So boys cross country is Saturday morning. So it's uh, something that we look forward to, everybody. Boys and girls cross country will be Saturday morning. Top CMA. At CMA, uh, 9 o'clock, I believe they run. So hopefully we, uh, we advance those teams uh, on to uh, regional running uh, for the next weekend, and we can get some soccer teams out into the regional the following weekend. So it would be a great time to have um, you know, zebra cross country and zebra soccer keep going. Uh, volleyball will fire off then shortly after that into our tournament play. Um, nice matchup there with us. We'll be ranked in the top 10. Mishawaka Marion probably will come in ranked number one in Class 3A. Uh, that will be at Mishawaka Marion High School this year. Um, so we'll have to travel up to uh, South Bend for that sectional. So it'll be a, a, a challenge for us uh, going up there, uh, playing the number one ranked team. But, um, you know, the old adage is somebody's got to knock them off. So why not That's us? Right. So hopefully we get a favorable draw and We've played a nice competitive schedule this year, so yeah, yeah, I feel like they're pretty prepared for tournament play at this point in the season. 
4.23 left in the game. Uh, Rochester still in control, 6-1. to one. Uh, Zebras just uh, working the ball, being uh, methodical and trying to uh, find another seam in the uh, cast and defense on the front half here. So maybe, maybe get one more before it's over with. Zebras are doing a nice job in this latter portion of the second half, controlling the ball and really keeping it down uh, closer towards towards our goal in the cast and territory. They are, you know, that's uh, I think you know possession uh, of the soccer ball and um, you know working those angles and, and being aggressive. That's another, another key that I've really enjoyed watching these guys. How they've um, good possession, good ball by Jonathan Baker uh, over to the wing. Just touched too far there. So good little sequence though. You know, it starts in the back third, just like we talked about. Whitfield, uh, great possession um, of, the, of the soccer ball and, and a great sequence. You, you could credit that clear back to the defense, you know, creating the offense in that transition. Good little collective uh, possession by Jonathan Baker to uh, feed it over. Substitution there. To Trey Adley. Summer coming in for number seven, Carlos Lorza Rios. So, three minutes left in the game. Oh, just missed Noah Roberts on that outlapping overlap. Hey, Heather, is Jeff going to be showing up pretty soon? No foul there, just, just contact. The offensive player usually has advantage uh, to contact unless the defensive player changes that. But not many fouls in the second half. Um, not many free kicks. It's been been a pretty clean half of soccer. A couple goals by each side. A um, couple injuries. Nothing nothing major. That's yeah. A zebra. That should be a zebra goal. Yeah. Illegal throw. He did not bring the ball back, you know, overhead. We talked about that in the first half. Did not bring that back. The, the officials explaining, okay, you got to bring it back. You only brought it to your, your forehead here. It's got to go behind your head. That one was pretty noticeable. It yeah. It uh, didn't go very far. It kind of just dropped in front of his feet there. Yep. So it's it's uh, they it's just still a throw in. It just goes over to the zebras on their throw in. And if they were to violate, it would go back to the comments. We would do this until someone were able to correctly throw the ball in. But um, <laughs> and that's just you know the speed of the game. You know, they wanting to throw minutes. it soft. Two minutes left um, of the game. Those soft short throws are some of the hardest ones to do in soccer because your momentum and your arm and the swing of the ball you have to have it at a certain speed to get it over there and and. Um, it, it sometimes mistimes itself and it looks ugly. <laughs> and that one there didn't look clean. He didn't bring it back far enough. But that's all right. He officially did a good job of explaining what the violation was and why it was. Oh. Okay. Got a foul on the Zebras. Probably A.J. Knotts. Uh, depends how you want to call that one there in there. Um, so it would be a direct kick for the Zebra or for the Comets going the other way. Looks like Henderson found his glasses, so that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it looks like the uh, the zebras are going to move to uh, 14 and three on the season, uh, most wins in one season um, for the, the zebras, which is outstanding. Um, great core group of uh, of guys they've got. You know, in the last two or three years, Rochester has some has had some really good seasons. Has had some really good. Um, players come through the program, have went on and played uh, at the collegiate level and, and done some things at the next level. So it's just a, a good mark of, of a solid program that's starting to build and, and find some tradition, you know, being a young young, um, a young program in terms of, of building tradition okay, in the area since the football has been around for such, such a long time. Cheer your team on. It's a good chance to stay warm. Casting fans, Rochester fans, everybody cheer on your team for these last 30 seconds. So we had a foul uh, on the Zebras. It's going the other way. 30 seconds left in the match. Rochester's just looking to uh, ride this one out and advance to the sectional championship. It will be their third time in the last three years advancing to uh, their third straight sectional championship game. Uh, losing the last two, 1-0 uh, to Peru. Nine, um, eight, so. seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, and there's your game. Congratulations. That's a ball game. Looks and like we're going to finish up with the Zebras the defeating Caston right six to one. Six yep, uh, great game by both teams. Uh, it's good sportsmanship. You see Taylor Medina coming out and shaking hands as we're, we're wrapping things up. Uh, you know, congratulating the cast, cast of comments on an outstanding season. Uh, Rochester now moves to 14 and three on the season. Uh, will await the uh, winner of the McConaughey Peru match that will take place just after this one. So we will know 
um, within a couple hours here of who the Zebras will play on Saturday evening. So want to see lots of Zebra fans out there uh, Saturday evening um, cheering on the Zebras down here at uh, Bingo Memorial, Memorial Stadium. Uh, kickoff will be at 6 p.m. 